Hello. Good, Good morning. morning. It's Yoga Sutras time, boy. There are already so many of them. Yeah, the sun is always shining. Namaste, Inika, Raj says. Hello, Raj. Hi, Inika. Hi, Good everyone. Good morning, Govinda. There's another Raj. And a Nelly. And there's a Nelly. Hi, Nelly. And Johnny was first. Johnny was quick. Mm -hmm. There we go. So here we are together. And it's Yoga Sutras time. Where are we? We are. Oops. We just finished the Yamas and the Niyamas. We finished the Yamas and the Niyamas. <coughs> Excuse me. And there is Asana. Mm -hmm. Rung number three of the eight rungs. And so, oops, I, uh, yeah. If that is too deep, you can put that pillow up as some of the. <laughs> they can rearrange things. Mm -hmm. So, well, Nilesh is here with us this morning. I can't turn all the, the way from Atlanta. All the way from Gujarat through Atlanta and here. Mm -hmm. And it's cold here today. The rain it went was, through, though. It was snowing in Atlanta. They had a lot of snow in Atlanta. For Atlanta, they had it. And I think it's snowing in Holland, isn't it? Or it was yesterday. Is it Holland? Also behind the clouds. Now it's a sir. philosophical morning among them. It's a philosophical morning, all behind. Let us remove the clouds, okay? And so that puts us, shows us where we are. I'm trying to remove this. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Mm. There we go. There I went. There we go. There's the Yoga Sutra that we're looking for. Oh, I forgot my tea. You forgot what? I forgot my cup of tea. Oh, my, my, my. <laughs> what are we going to do? Grab it. Grab it. Off to get tea. So here we are, and here's our little picture over here. The, the three little vertical bars are symbol of the four, uh, the three bars. The four bars are symbols of the four chapters. So rung three, the asana is near the bottom of rung of bar number two, which simply means it's a visual way of a reminder that says, Wait a minute, later when you think about it, where is asana in the Yoga Sutras? And, and maybe some part of it flashes in your memory that says, well, it's somewhere near the end of chapter two. It's helpful to remember. So if you ever want to look something up, that your mind will have a little idea of where to look. And of course, this bar thing here, I'm going to go here temporarily. This is the way in which the main page is set up. So see, it's exactly the same four bars. So going left to right. So if you come near the bottom down here of bar number two, see there it is, huh? There's asana. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and so, are you coming, Ma? Yeah. My tree ran away. The Bye. third of the eight rungs, of yoga is asana or sitting posture for the later rungs. The word asana comes from the root as, which means to sit. Now, the sarcastic, humorous side of me cannot help but wonder oh. if asana it means to sit, and the root of that is as, which means to sit. I just cannot help but wonder if that's where the English word ass comes from. Awesome. Or os. What's but in Hindi? 
don't remember. I think it's the very That's slang way the pitch. What are they saying? But I Hmm. Yeah. Don't know. It's yeah. not us. It's not that. That's why. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If he would have said, "Oh, it's very close to that." Yeah, it's but not. I just. <laughs> Puja would know. Puja would know. She is from Hindi speaking place. I see. <laughs> not important. Just curious. It's not important. But anyway, that's just my little yeah. trivia here. <laughs> now, <clears throat> note here that when I did this section here. It's actually reasonably straightforward what this section is about. But in our modern world, we need to make note of the the fact. I'm going to say that it's a fact, not an opinion. It is a fact that the word asana has been, what's a nice word, altered. The not nice word is hijacked. Destroyed. Or destroyed, or distorted something like is distorted is another word altered. that's not nice. Altered, but uh, now in our modern world, asana is the entire subject of yoga. Yoga is something that is done in a gymnasium or in a studio, and it has to do with hundreds, if not thousands, of of body movements, and we kind of all know that. But in the context of traditional yoga, it has a different meaning. The evolution or the devolution of asana yoga or hatha yoga has occurred significantly in the last 100 years. Where I'm not going to try to go into that in great detail here. Elsewhere on my website, I wrote an article called Modern and Traditional Yoga. And that, and it built up. That page built up over a period of a couple of years, where I just started collecting comments and quotes to try to explain it. And some people that run into that page are very appreciative. I get nice emails, yeah. and others write me really nasty emails because I have such a negative attitude. And it's not the intent to have a negative attitude, but when you look at what the traditional meaning of asana is. It just simply doesn't match what's going on anyway. So this part here, when I did this, I pretty much refrained from making a big point out of that and just trying to focus on what What it is is that is being said in the traditional yoga. In traditional yoga, what's being said by Patanjali in the Yoga Sutras. I also know that your seat on which you do your meditation is sometimes referred as your asana. Yeah, it's your, it's the seat. It's the seat. It's the place where, where you, you sit, do. and the yes. act that you do is you sit, sit on the seat. Yes. Yoga has been defined as the mastery of the thought patterns in the mind field, Sutra 2, Chapter 1, so that self-realization can be experienced, Sutra 3. To be able to do the meditation mm-hmm. practices that allow this, it is essential that the posture be steady and comfortable. That's what the sutra says. We'll go look at the actual the actual sutra. So it must be steady and it must be comfortable. Two means of perfecting the postures are in Sutra 47. To gain that steady and comfortable posture comes by loosening of tension or effort and allowing attention to merge with the infinite. Mm. And as usual, Patanjali doesn't explain a lot of these, so it comes down to to commentaries and discussions and oral tradition. Then, so what? From the attainment of a perfected pair of posture, there arises an unassailable, unimpeded freedom from the suffering due to the pairs of opposites such as heat and cold, good and bad, pain and pleasure. Just from that already. Just from that. Notice this for yourself, that when you sit for meditation, isn't it true, I say to you, isn't it true that when you sit for meditation, And when from time to time you just, everything's just right and you're really, really comfortable and you're really steady, that sometimes that happens. And in that moment, the pain, the contrast of pain and pleasure that you were experiencing even earlier that day seemed to vanish. There is no discomfort of heat or cold. 
we were talking earlier about the weather and the and you know how how nice it is to want to go be in the Himalayas to meditate. And we we're talking about how very cold it can be there and how hard it is because it's cold here. So it prompted us to be sitting having breakfast talking about temperature. And but isn't it true that when you're having a really nice meditation, doesn't matter whether it's a hot summer day or or a cold winter day. Indeed. Indeed. And, and we just feel impervious to it. And we're not at the moment being sucked into pains and pleasures. Like so, people have come to me in the last month when their life was moved around so much that their seat was the only thing that stayed. The seat normal. was the only thing. It's another way of saying the same. Physically it's moving from city to, to city, city and, or country to country, mm, and a lot of activity going on. And everything is different, but the seat. Yeah, and so this is the principle here, and that's in Sutra forty-eight. So the posture here's the actual sutra. So it's really that short and sweet. But yeah, I already was remarking how little that blue bar was up in your little drawing here. Forgot to mention it, but it's just a little pilly. And if you ever look at it like bar. this, how can it be the whole thing? It's just yeah, so clear if you have it in this picture. <laughs> Asana, just a little bar. Well, it's only three sutras. Yeah, it's very small, compact. Out of that, very out of dense. That Fifty something sutras in that yeah. thing there. Stira Sukham Asana. The posture asana for meditation should be steady, stable, and motionless, as well as comfortable, and this is the third of the eight rungs of yoga. The two essential characteristics, the posture, uh, they, they, this is repetitive. It's just, you know, if it was a sutra that was more information, we do the same layout here, the same, I put the same sort of thing of, Putting the putting the translation, then putting the transliterated Sanskrit, then putting the uh, the meaning of the words, and there's only three words, and then a, and then an explanation about it. So I always follow the same format of describing this stuff, and so it, that's why it's repetitive. And so it should be steady, stable, and motionless, and it should be comfortable or filled with ease. The sage Vyasa, which is the dominant, famous commentator, you know, on the Yoga Sutras, named several postures, which are further described by Vachapati Mishra in the translation by Rama Prasad, a very, very superb translation of the yoga sutras and commentary and so it lists some of these and and we don't need to go in detail there if you want to look there it is somewhere my advice is to pick one posture and not to keep changing it yeah that's the, the best idea is so if you have your posture don't need don't, to don't look keep at changing ones. it a lot now, I didn't write about this here, but elsewhere, Swami Rama pointed out, I think he said he was in, biologically, he was he was in his 30s before mm -hmm. he finally came to understand the asana has to do with essentially from here to down here with the trunk. Yeah, the whole torso. Mm -hmm. Without the, the torso. arms and legs, basically. And the arms and the legs just don't matter very much. The There's a wonderful principle in there, and that is adjust your arms and start start with proper postures and and, and adjust the arms and legs uh, in a way that they are comfortable and not distracting. I know one American fella who who became Swami, still a Swami, still alive, and. Uh, and many years ago, around 19, early 1970s, Swami Rama, he was trying very hard to do Siddhasana, the accomplished pose. I went through this myself. And uh, and he finally told this guy, no, you sit in a chair. And, of course, it was a little bit of a bruise to his ego because he was working hard trying to be a yog good yogi and force himself into sitting in a very difficult posture because that's the way it's supposed to be. And this is a man who had a Ph.D., so he was educated, and he had an educated, and I say this in a nice way, he had an educated, you know, pride in himself. And so all of a sudden, 
Here's the master saying, no, you sit in a chair. And to this day, he still sits in a chair. Nothing wrong with this. Why? The key is that the torso is, is the head, neck, and trunk are aligned and comfortable. That's what's important. I tried Siddhasana, the accomplished pose. I worked on it for a couple of years because they say if you work on it for a year, you, you will master it. Well, it never really felt comfortable to me like it was supposed to. So I changed to, uh, I changed to Svastik Asana uh, because the, the, the Siddhasana, where Siddhasana isn't even listed there, huh? And, and I modified it. And, and anyway, I'm just saying if you, if you play with it, you see that there really is something to this. It's supposed to be steady and, yeah, stero, sterosuka, whatever posture may secure steadiness and ease. This is approved by the writer of the aphorisms, Patanjali is also described as yatasuka. It's, it's like stabling the mind. You, we give a few suggestions, but anything you stabilize, it's, it's yeah, good. Yeah, whatever does works. Yeah. And so this is this here is what happened in my own journey yeah. of posture. There's one guy we have, when my health was suffering a little couple of years ago, Raj actually helped, and we went and got a little couch, and it sits in the meditation room. And sometimes I still sit on that couch. And there's a fellow named uh, Shirdi Sai Baba, left the body, I don't know, 30, 40 years ago in India. Jesus. And Shirdi Sai Baba sits on the edge of a table or a couch or something with one foot flatly on the floor. I, I don't think I can show you this. I'll try to give you some idea. It doesn't matter here what I'm saying. It's not, it's not important, but. And he sits with one foot squarely on the floor. And the other foot pulled up like this. See, I'm pulling my foot up here. Not crossed over like this, but sitting like this. And so one foot is on the floor. And this is the way you always see. I don't think, I don't know if they have any photographs of him. But he's always a but, but there's always a lot of artist sketches and paintings of him. And he sits like that. And I have played with that. And so sometimes I like to sit in that posture, not because I'm trying to be a Shirdi Sai Baba, but because it's an example of this principle that we're talking about. It's whatever is steady and comfortable. Like when we figured out that my lower legs are shorter than my upper legs. Yeah. And that's why Siddhasana for this me is, is technically Matri not possible. was struggling with trying to do Siddhasana for some long period and even of time, years, I think, yeah. in Swastikasana. Well, just the design of her body, if you've ever been around her in person, you, you, you notice that she's very tall. But the part of her that's tall is from her butt to her head. I have really long shishuna. She has a very long, that just means you have a longer journey yeah, to travel. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but once it awakens, be aware. No. <laughs> anyway. Because we both sit the straight. The point of that, but but yeah. is that from, from yeah. her butt but. down to her the bottom of her feet. A little stumpy. Is a little, st I didn't say stumpy, she said stumpy. But it's, it's true. A, it's a little... Short. So a little bit vertically impaired. Which is good, otherwise I would be over two meters. But the thing is, when you bend at your knee to do to do Siddhasana, the accomplished pose, when you bend at your knee, your heel is supposed to come up and rest on the perineum, the flat space that's between your anus and the genital area. Well, she was struggling with this for the longest time. And one day she and I were sitting together playing with this. And we discovered that the problem is that her lower leg from her knee down to her heel is shorter than from her knee up to the hip. So it just technically doesn't even come in the it, area. I miss it. Technically, it just misses, misses by, uh, by about that much. It's just the, that lower part of her leg is just simply not long enough to reach the perineum. The perineum. It yeah. just can't get there. And so 
then we immediately say, well, then that's over for you. No, no yogi for you. No enlightenment for you. You're screwed now. Nothing you can do. I, that's just bad humor. I'm just praying for a next body to be. Yeah, just pray for a next body. That's all I'm doing right now. That's yeah, you have, you have bad legs and you're a woman. <laughs> Oh, and I'm not born in India. And you're not born in India. Whatever are you going to do? Anyway, all that said in good humor. Yes. And so what do you do? You shift and you adjust. And so, once you understand these principles, then it's like this is not such a big problem after all. Head, neck, and trunk. It's supposed to be steady and, and comfortable. comfortable. Note the suggestion in the last item above that any posture may be used which brings steadiness and ease. This is a common suggestion in oral tradition that the posture may be varied, but that the key is that it must be steady and comfortable. Steady is given to mean that the head, neck, and trunk must be aligned, leaving the natural curve in the spine. The lower spine naturally curves, and then in the upper naturally uh, has a curve in the other direction, but not extreme. So you observe whether you, if, if you're accidentally slumping, there's a way you can be slumping and have a terrible posture and sort of falling asleep, falling over. You see this happen. Somebody's sitting there sort of falling asleep like this. And you say, but that's my natural curve in my spine. So that's not it. It's not that you're using it as a rationalization that I don't, I don't have any need to sit straight. In fact, sitting straight will help you stay awake. It's the slumping part that we, we sort of do, most of us, when we're about to fall asleep. Anyway, the means of perfecting the posture is that of relaxing or loosening of effort and allowing the attention to merge with endlessness or the infinite. And there is the word for relaxing or loosening, relux, loosening of effort and allowing the attention to merge with the infinite. And here just saying the same thing, a steady and comfortable posture comes through two means, loosening of tension or effort to sit in the posture and allowing attention to merge with the infinite. A still higher degree of steadiness is attained by Samyama on the channel below the throat, as noted in Sutra 32 of Chapter 3. And so the, it gets even, the subtler we go internally, it just, the posture gets even better. So we don't need to put a lot of emphasis on this. It's just a, It's just sort of a note that says, wait a minute, later on it still gets even better. Steadiness is attained by meditation on the throat. There, are we going back? Okay. Most of us have busy lives in which everything happens because of a concentrated effort to make it happen. <coughs> Excuse me. It seems as if we must do something if anything is to happen. <clears throat> Perfecting posture for meditation comes not so much by doing, but by not doing. Note here, now when I say what I'm about to say, you know, I'm not meaning to be not nice. I don't mean it in that spirit at all. But it's very common to say, well, I, my sitting posture is not so good. What do I need to do? Well, you need to go to more modern postural yoga studio classes. You need more classes in complex yogasanas. And that's doing something. That aligns very nicely with most of the education that most of us have had in our schools as children and growing up in college or whatever advanced training we have, we're taught that to do anything, you have to learn some more, gain more information. And here, the, the perfection of the spot posture is happening by loosening of effort. So it's very tempting to say, how do I, how do I improve my posture? Well, 
go do more of that. Now, I'm saying that just to point out the contrast that, that what Patanjali is suggesting is the posture is perfected by the loosening of effort. It is not actually a criticism that says don't do hatha yoga, don't do postural yoga. That's not what the message is, and it's not the message that I'm saying. I'm not trying to have a battle with that because it can be extremely useful. Some degree of physical exercise, working with the with the with the yoga postures is extremely useful, but it has more to do with the first niyama than it does with the third anga, the third rung. The third rung is about sitting posture and steady and stable. The, the saucha, the first niyama, has to do with purifying and preparing the body and the mind, including the body. So we need to do those things. It's very healthy. It's very healthy to do general exercise. Where are you going with that? Oh, my. Put it there so I will do it soon. Uh-huh. Surely we have to put some effort into training the body to sit straight and be aligned. However, after that is accomplished, the next step to learn is to do nothing, <laughs> allowing the posture to settle in for meditation. Just note that there's a paradox in this, mm -hmm. and we can do this well. We all can do this well. So we put some effort in, but then when I'm actually sitting and trying to sit straight, instead of struggling with muscles and trying to force myself to be comfortable and straight, we let go of the effort, and it just softens and softens and softens. That's the principle. And the nice thing is the posture will correct itself. The posture, we will get our own internal message of whether I need to shift ever so slightly to the left or yeah. right or straighten up a little bit. Then it doesn't feel like forcing it in. Then it's not forcing. There, thank you, Mom. Then it and doesn't. sometimes you get a jolt, and then you realize, oh, this is straight. This is straight, <laughs> yeah. And the internal guide will snap you into a straight posture. Click. It is an active, listen to this. It's hard to find the words. It is an active form of doing nothing. Nice. Of consciously ceasing to place any effort into the posture. This conscious effort to release any form of effort can be felt experientially internally, which is what Matri just said. You can know for yourself that this really is valid, useful, and key principle in developing a sitting posture for meditation. And like all of this stuff, that's where we must learn it. We must learn it inside. And then you say, wow. There's a bunch of comments being made. Oh, there was. Yeah. I was missing. I'm Sometimes I miss it too because the scroll is down to, and then you don't we see have it to moving. Scroll the bar. Yoga. Hi, B. Hi, Renee. Hi, hi. Where's B? Uh, hi, there's B. Yeah. Hi, B. It's Markle, guys. It's smart. It's smartly. Yeah. Ich esse auch oatmeal. Das ist sehr schön. Ich, I eat some oatmeal. Ah, and Renee is here live. Nice. Hi, Renee. Finally! Hello, Roseanne. Good, Good morning. morning. She's here. Tusharain. Tusharain. Tusharain, I think. Hello. A little bit of snow here in Holland yesterday, says Yoo-hoo. Yoo yes, wet snow. Wet snow. Oh, goody. We got, Johnny is <laughs> we got wet, but no snow. It never snows on the sun. You never know. <laughs> What is that from Nelly? Is that's a smiley face? I guess. I think so. And there's a little and a box. box. So that's an icon that we don't have. That's an icon here. that doesn't show up here. And Eileen. And so hi, good, good morning, Eileen. Hee haw, hee haw. We missed what that was about. Yeah. I think we should not ask. Namaste, Rosalind. That was with the ask comments, probably. Uh. What? Asana. But the ass. Hee haw. Oh, the ass. Uh, thank you. <laughs> good, good catch. Good Nilesh. catch, Nilesh. Nilesh caught that, Johnny. <laughs> hee haw, hee haw. 
there are some problems experienced recently, most because of the trunk was not straight. Simple. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. That's what you call, Rosalind, old dogs learning new tricks. Hi, Matesh. And what mm -hmm. have we got here? With aspect of sitting posture, as you mentioned, any asana is good as long as it's steady and easy. However, it, is it true that we, we we sit with legs crossed and the energy circle is formed, which is very helpful? Yeah, the, there's there's a part of what's always going on is the question of what the subtle energies are doing. Johnny says his torso is longer, also. Nice. Welcome to the club of yeah. long sushumnas. Long sushumnas. Hi, Randy. That's so it. There, oh, okay. wow, so we there we it. are. Okay. Know for yourself that this really is valid. you got to play with it. Mm -hmm. One way of loosening effort is to systematically move attention through the body through a variety of relaxation processes, such as the things that we use in preparation for the state of yoga nidra moving the attention through the body. And I did an article here on that if you're curious to to see what I put with that. It's not going. Why is it not going? And so see I even wrote a long article talking about this. Mm. And so if it's not on samaj.com, it's not in It's all there. It's all there. There's something there. This is a pretty long time, mm. pretty long article. So, and the thing about this is, this is describing in words practices. So you take the 61 points, for example, and if you have to go through this like this, it's not easy. But if you listen to it on the Yoga Nidra guidance, it's easier. Anyway. There's just some summaries of methods. Focusing on the infinite. If you'd like to play a little game, play, yes, along yes, with, yes. play a little game with me right now, just wherever you're sitting right now. You don't have to move around or anything. This is just a little game. And if your eyes are open, that's okay. But if your eyes closed, that's okay. And for just a moment, be aware of the space that your body occupies. To do that, it means just be aware of your body. That means the body, Rojo, that's laying on the couch there. Okay. So just be aware of your own body. Now, this is just a game. Don't make this hard, please. Now notice how easy it is. It doesn't matter if your eyes are open or your eyes are closed. For just a minute, be aware of the couch that you're sitting on or the chair that you're sitting on. So there's not just me and my body. There's also this chair or this couch. And then ever so gently, just be aware. You can open your eyes or not. It's not necessary at all. We can all do this with our eyes closed. Be aware of the room in which you are located right now. Just allow yourself to be aware of the room. There's furniture over there. There may be some other person or people around the room. Like right for me sitting here, I'm, I, I'm here. The chair is here. There's a ma tree beside me. And over there is a rojo. And over there is a nilesh. So there's four, three other people in the room with me here. I started to say four. There's three other people in the room here with me. And there's Mr. C. And then, there, and then please be aware of the house that you're in, the whole building or the apartment or whatever, or the ashram that you're in right now. And notice with a sense of enjoyable fascination that what you're doing is you're allowing your scope, your range of attention to expand from the body to the chair, to the other people, to the room you're in, and now to the building that you're in. Now pretend for a moment, you can't see even if your eyes are open, but pretend that you are aware of the city in which your house or your ashram or your home is located. 
In other words, allowing your attention to expand to the size of the city where you are located. Now, as best you can, be aware of the country in which you are located right now. And notice that there's a gentle expansion going on. And now this one's a little bit more of a leap, but you can do it. Now, allow your awareness to expand so that in some way you are right now aware of the entire planet Earth. Here's the whole earth, and I'm sitting here. It's as if I'm sitting here with my very long arms outstretched, embracing the whole planet, as if I'm holding it like a ball in my heart. And then do another step. Allow your awareness to expand so that you are bigger than the earth. I am so big that the planet Earth is contained within me. And now allow it to expand some more so that the solar system is contained within me. I am bigger than the sun and the Earth and Mars and Venus and Saturn and Jupiter and Uranus, humor there, and Neptune and all of that. And then really big, Imagine that you are now the same size, if not bigger, than the entire Milky Way galaxy. And now imagine as best you can, it's very hard to do, but we can play with it. Imagine that you are as big as the whole universe. And over there is a little dot that is contained within me. And that little dot is the Milky Way galaxy. And I have just played a little game of expanding my awareness to the infinite. And if you came along with me on this little pretend game that we just played, notice the fact that your posture is probably very steady right now. So steady that you almost forgot you had a body. This is a simple way to play with this principle that Patanjali is laying out in front of us. And now be aware of your own body. And if your eyes close, go ahead and open your eyes again and notice the magic, I say playfully, that there's something to this, isn't there, Nilesh? Something just happened, didn't it? It's very peaceful, isn't it? Very steadying. This little body is so small. And, you know, Matri just said this body is so small. That's just a way to play with this thing. By consciously, intentionally practicing the effortlessness of posture, along with the focus on embracing the infinite, it becomes self-evident how well these two work together. Now, if you just did that, then you know what I'm saying. And then it's your experience. It's not Patanjali saying it. It's certainly not Swami J saying it or guiding a little experiment. It's your own experience. It's, wow, there's something to this. And when I sit for my asana to do my meditation, a part of that process is to not just mechanically get my bones and my muscles lined up in a rigid kind of way, that what I want to do is loosen my effort and allow the range, the radius, so to speak, of my awareness to expand in the direction of the infinite and notice the magic that happens. And if we do that, then the way in which you do the next rung, which is about breathing, will be very, very different. It will be soft and gentle. It will not be forced in a mechanical technique. Right, Ma? Mm. Ma's almost, she's gone. Like um, the universe is breathing instead of you. It's like the universe is breathing rather than me as a physical person. Get some comments. All right, I'll come over here. The outer boundaries of the nadis. That's a way of saying it. I like that. Focusing on the infinite is better than infinitely focusing on the finite. Something crashed? Yeah, behind it. I think something fell. It's not important. It doesn't matter. No. Just, just, just tear up the furniture. <laughs> Puja came in. <laughs> Nilesh's wife is with it's us. Really she's tearing up the furniture over there. I'm just teasing. There's some oat. Did you have some oatmeal? Okay, good. 
And so let's see what else we got. The uh, that was it. That was it. Okay. That was it, Johnny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Always count Dang on Johnny on to come up with a humorous, wise comment. The uh, from the attainment of that perfected posture. Okay, now oh, wow. we just did the perfected posture. Okay. I know, mm -hmm. but now let's see what comes from that. Just pretend that you and I just did that. We just attained perfected posture, comma. There arises an unassailable, unimpeded freedom from suffering due to the pairs of opposites such as heat and cold, good and bad, and pain and pleasure. Isn't it true? And even in that little, silly little experiment that we just did, even if it was only for a few seconds, there was a relative freedom from pain and from bad and from heat and cold. True or false, guys? True. Ma? Mm. Rojo? Yeah. yeah, Rojo said yeah. Rojo had to wake up to say yeah. No, she's gone. Anyway, there's something to this. So this little block of sutras here, the way Patanjali is describing asana, there really, really, really is something to it. Is comfortable but not steady because the mind drifts to sleep. Like lying down is comfortable but not steady because the mind drifts to sleep. Rojo is laying down right now. and I don't know if you could hear her. She said, Say it again. Laying down is comfortable. But lying down is comfortable but not, not steady. steady. Yes. Because the mind likes to drift off. Because the mind likes to drift off. This is one of the reasons that people often this is very common question. May I? May I practice? Why do I have to sit? I, I feel more comfortable laying down for my meditation. May I lay down for my meditation? That asana means to sit. There's a very practical reason for that, and, and, and Rojo basically just said it. Think about this yourself. Isn't it true that when you lay your body down, the conditioned response that your unconscious mind reads out of that is, oh, Laying down, it's time, obviously, to go to sleep. We've trained that for decades. Yeah, for decades, our whole life, we have been trained. You know, mommy and daddy said, lay down, go to sleep, lay down, go to sleep. When did a child ever hear mommy and daddy say, lay down, stay awake, lay down, stay play awake? Play dead. <laughs> play dead, play dead, don't go to sleep. No child ever heard that, did they? Did you ever hear that as a child? I never heard that, lay down and stay awake. To lay down as a meditation pro posture is an extremely advanced posture. It is a very advanced posture. Because the Thomas has to be. Because we have, yes, well said, Ma, because we, ha we must overcome the Thomas, the inertness, the habit pattern of our conditioning that laying down means go to sleep. And so once we can do that, then we can more and more do what Rojo's doing right now. We can lay on a couch and stay awake. And for most of us, even, even after playing with it for quite a few years, there's still a habit of the mind that it moves in and out of sleep. But if we keep practicing it elsewhere, we talk about observing waking, dreaming, and deep sleep which is outlined by the Om Mantra, remember that? And those levels of consciousness, then gradually we become aware of shifting. If we're Rojo laying on the couch there right now with head on pillow and a blank or blanket tucked up around her, if she's doing that, I don't know. Right now she's looking at me smiling, so she's with us for the moment. But only she will know internally whether she's just completely falling asleep and is gone and 20 minutes later she opens her eyes and says, where'd everybody go? Because we all left and she's asleep on the couch, you know. But we do it ourselves. And as she's laying there, she may observe that she's drifting in and out of consciousness, that for a few seconds she literally lost awareness and she fell asleep and was gone. And then for a moment she may have some little streams of dream fragments, and she's aware of them consciously. She may then fall into deep sleep, but yet be fully conscious, and that's yoga nidra. There's a comment Swami Rama makes that is absolutely true, that is relevant here. 
when your whole life becomes one of meditation, yoga nidra comes naturally. It's not that yoga nidra is a series of techniques. We use the techniques of moving the attention through the body. It's a sneaky way of getting the mind to be able to fall asleep and yet paradoxically remain awake. And so as we play with this, like Rojo is on the couch, only she internally can know what's going on. She internally can notice for herself when she falls asleep and loses consciousness, and when she happens to fall asleep and not lose consciousness, and then maybe here comes a dream segment, and then she's breathing and, and, and like that. So my point of making this little diversion here is that it's very tempting to want to use laying down or shavasana as a meditation posture. And why is that not recommended? Because we're all trained to fall asleep. And so when we try to meditate in that posture, particularly near the beginning of doing practices, early on in the practice of learning meditation, particularly then what's all that's going to happen is we're going to fall asleep. If I may add the opposite, that if the posture really becomes steady and stable and comfortable and in alignment, then there is a natural clarity that is so yummy to rest in. Well, that's what I was yeah. attempting to say. You just <laughs> said it in better words. There's a clarity. Then it's a very good posture. Mm. Very, very nice to just sit in. Very, very nice to do. Mm. All right, now let's go look. There was a big, big comment, comment. A big comment. Big comment from Matej. Probably a stupid thought. Okay, well, since it's a stupid thought, let's talk about it. But if we just mentally do any asana, does it have any of the same benefits like doing it physically? Yes, of course it does. Because whatever we do physically out here starts mentally in here. That's just how this works. So you're, that's correct statement. Sometimes the laziness in me makes me think like I'm doing yoga nidra or meditation while I'm laying down or sitting in any posture. That's a good thing. That's a good thing, Matej, that you're observing that and you're playing with it. That's what we want to do. I'm going to read that again. It makes me think sometimes the laziness in me. And what comes to mind there when you say the laziness in me, if you practice awareness, what you are being aware of is tamas, the tam, tam, tamas guna. The tamasic tendency is towards laziness. But the same posture, the same relaxed, steady place, high June, June, that same thing done in the absence of tamas. And obviously there's not much rajas going on, can be very sattvic, can be a very deep practice and then makes you think that you're doing yoga nidra, and sometimes you are. Sometimes you are doing yoga nidra. Remember that yoga nidra, as you know, is a state of consciousness. It is not those silly techniques and methods that we use to get there. Those techniques that we use are to trick the mind. There's, it's sneaky. It's just a bunch of sneaky tricks to move your attention around in such a way that there's the possibility that you may fall into conscious deep sleep. That's the state of yoga nidra. So what you're saying to me, Matej, makes perfect sense. Or meditation. And then you have to internally, like I'm like the Rojo is laying over on the couch right now. I don't know what she's doing over there right now. I don't know if she's sleeping. I don't know if she's doing meditation in the conscious waking state remember meditation is done in the waking state and then expands through dreaming and deep sleep yoga nidra leaves the waking state goes right through dreaming state and goes to the deep sleep state but paradoxically you're still awake so only you matesh can know internally whether you whether that was yoga nidra or meditation and gradually it's moving us towards the awareness, if I may turn this on here like this. It's moving us. Yeah, the comment is in pictures. 
I know. Well, okay, I'll, I'm going to take the comment out for just a moment here because I can't pose. You know, are you in that posture of being aware of this, be very calm and quiet and clear? Or did you leave this and go down here into conscious deep sleep? And only you internally know what it is. And you come back out here, then you're back in your body and you're using your vocal cords and all that. And then you say to us, and we say, so what, what just happened, Matesh? And you say, I just did yoga nidra. I was in conscious deep sleep. And only you know that internally. Or you say, no, I didn't go there. I was in the conscious waking state and I was doing the meditation. And this beautiful ohm came forward to me and some lights and some memories came forward to me and I ignored them so they attenuated and that's called non-attachment. And I got an intuition about this. I didn't go there, but the intuition of my true nature being Atman came forward to me and what an incredible meditation it was. I hope what I'm saying right now to you, Matesh, is making sense. Let me put the comments back on. While laying down or sitting in any posture, I go with the flow and I feel similar experience of calmness as if I am doing physically. Yes, that's how it works. Because, again, what happens out in the physical first happened inside in the so-called mental. So is it possible that we can just go through mentally and get similar experience? It does not make much sense to me, but wanted to check. Of course it does not make sense, but it's the truth. <laughs> Why are we doing anything with the physical at all? Because what we are really trying to do, I'm going to turn this off again. What we are really trying to do with the physical is help to gain aware of the mental, the conscious and the unconscious. Why do we care about that? Because what we really want to do is experience the Atman, which is on the other side of all of this. So it sounds to me, Matesh, like what you're saying, what comes to mind to me to say back to you is keep keep playing. Just keep playing with it. And allow yourself to, don't allow yourself to accidentally let that replace sitting straight at meditation time. Do that practice. Don't allow this to replace the time where you say, now I'm going to lay down and attempt to do yoga nidra. Do that too. Do them as separate practices and gain the benefits of that and then keep doing exactly what you're describing here. And, and you gain all of those insights that come, okay? Ron says this has been helpful. Good, good. It's supposed to be helpful. Roz, I keep calling you Roz, Roseanne, Ro, I call Roseanne Ro. But when there's a when there's a Roseanne and a Rosalind, when you two are side by side there, it, 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 it requires some discrimination but anyway. Can you please, Tershing, behold the blue bar in the middle of the screen? I don't see a blue bar. Well, when you move through your website and you click things to highlight things, <clears throat> I think it's what it's Yeah, called. yeah, yeah. You're saying like if I do yeah, this, well, I've got you your comment there. You're talking about there. Yeah. Where I do like that. Sometimes the comments just blocks it. Yeah, Thanks I'm, for I'm perfectly aware yeah, of that. And uh, when I say I'm perfectly aware of it, you know, sometimes <laughs> we see we, we can't quite see the screen. I guess... I'm trying to give the example. I think this this is what you're talking about. Now it's blocked. So keep the highlighted sort of in the middle or the high. I'm trying to get it where I. I'm trying to get it. I think that this is what you are talking about, where that's blocked. And so I'm aware of that, but we can't see it. My little box where I can actually see that is only about two inches wide and it's over on the corner. So I don't see it easily, but I'm aware of it and I'm mindful of it. And we, we try to, to do this in such a way that that doesn't happen. But unlike CNN and major television networks, 
I don't have a staff of people behind me operating the cameras and, and the room like that. I don't have a producer on online and a director that's making this happen. It's just me and my three sitting here with a mouse scrolling around. See, like, good hi, Rob. It is a good reminder. So we always need reminders. See, like, if I do this with Rob, it probably covered over that yeah. blue bar. That's, I guess that's what you're calling blue bar. So there's the text of the sutra. And then I turn Rob on and oops, it's blocked. Book by Samyama exercise without movement. Okay, there's a smile and hand, so that means we must be communicating. What? I'm sorry. The comment that Rob made that Samyama had a book written exercise without movement. Yeah, so he was it's a book called Exercise Without maybe Movement. Interesting it's been out of print for years. You can still find it in the used market on Amazon. I can recall, some of you may remember that if you're in the U.S., that you may recall the name David Letterman, who was a late-night TV show host of a comedy show. And many years ago, I've forgotten when it was. It must have been in the 1980s, I think it was. David Letterman did a comedy routine on the basis of that book one night. And he said, I have found the perfect book. He, and he got, and he's just this great. I wish I had a copy of this thing. I've actually looked on YouTube and never found it. it and he says something like, I, just, I absolutely hate exercise. I don't like going to the gym. And he says, I have finally found the solution. And he pulls out this book. Here is called exercise without movement. And, and you know, he, he didn't understand the point at all. No. But the humor was absolutely fabulous on late night television in the U.S. And so millions of people saw that. I'm sure nobody bought the book and practiced it. He was appealing to Thomas, Thomas factor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was, he was emphasizing the Thomas factor. But it because was, to do this, you have to have a razor sharp mind. I just happened to catch that by movie. accident one night. You're funny. I don't know if I ever saw it in a recording, I, but I, I must have seen it live. Mm -hmm. But it was very, very funny. I have Googled around thinking maybe somebody was able to get that extract. And if somebody ever run into somebody who knows how to research these things, maybe that TV network has that archive somewhere, it would be very, it would be fun to have it. Mm -hmm. But there is something to it. There very much is something to it. Controlling, the lesson is controlling your mice. Help me out here, Ma. I don't know. Ma usually has to, or often has to interpret Johnny, Johnny's humor to you, to me. He went, he went, for me, he went off into some unknown. <laughs> Johnny is prone to that going but off. But he did have a few little cute mice little things. There's there. little mice things running around there. Yeah. Okay. So time to end. We'll, we'll maybe go walk a little, and we'll it's come back outside. in an hour and do another thing. I don't think I've I don't think I've put out the announcement mm -hmm. yet. I'll go put it out. Hatha yoga also about awareness of body and ceasing to place effort into the postures. It depends on who's running the class, Renee. And those Hatha Yoga teachers who have an understanding of what we're talking about and are teaching in that context, I think, are rare. And if they're doing it, mostly they're doing it in terms of the goal of perfecting this posture. How do I perfect this posture? Well, loosen the effort and do all like that. So what you're saying is true. And that's one of the rationales that is used in modern yoga studios by certified yoga teachers, I say sarcastically, to justify that what they are doing is right and pure. And it completely ignores the notion that the goal of yoga is kaivalya, complete liberation of pure consciousness standing alone. Ask them anything about a vidya and you get a blank stare. Ask them about kaivalya, you get a blank stare. Sorry, it's just the way that it is. 
there are small numbers. I don't know what the number is. My guess would be it's probably less than 1% of the teachers that I have met who teach this stuff and are aware of what we're talking about. They are rare. They are not the majority. Unfortunately, when they are there, then And here's one of them. Da -da -da. This is June. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Hopefully, June snuck in. Mm -hmm. June has been teaching this stuff for quite a few years now. What, 30, years? Because we're not years? opposed to 40, asanas. 40, 40, 40. 40 years she's been doing it and sharing this stuff with people. Decades before they had such a thing as a certified oh, yoga teacher. <laughs> And, and so she understands what it's all about. So And so it's a delight. I find it delightful when I encounter a modern yoga teacher teaching physical asana but understands what we're talking about. Then when they do that class with the people, those people are learning what it's ultimately about. Then that class is extremely useful. It's not adding to the problem. It's helping people. Yeah. Yeah, Matri is yawning. She's going to probably lay down here. and. No, we're going to go for a walk. We're going to go for a walk. But I heard from resources on the other side of your shoulder that it is still in the 30s. It's still, it's the still 30s. cold. Well, anyway, so I'm going to go put out this the announced thing for, uh, you know, for coming down back down. together in 45 minutes. So, But for now, bye-bye. Thank you. Om Tat Sat, from Eileen. Om Tat Sat. Eileen has the last word for today. Om Tat Sat. Dui Dui. Dui Dui. <laughs> That's a Dutchie. I don't know if it's a, if he must. I have heard a lot. Tutorin, are you? A, are you from Holland? Are you Netherlands? From, are or you, you just from have seen? Ah, there's a, there's a Dutchie. There's Wouter. Now we got a Dutchie. Now yeah. we're coming near the end. Now we're starting to catch more Dutchies. Thank you, Matesh, for your comments and playing, yeah. everybody. And uh, bye, Nelly. Bye, Aniko. Bye, Nelly. Now, where was the Om Tat Sat yeah. that we were going to allow to? Who said the Om Tat Sat? Uh, Eileen said yeah. Om Tat Sat. Oh, Om Tat Sat. Okay. Thank you for visiting and playing. To be continued. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Silence after Om. Smile, Samadhi.